Okay, it's been a couple of weeks since we harvested the honey. Now it's time to get in these hives and see how they're doing. I got Doug with me today. Doug Blackman. Good Doug. Morning. Doug has been, he was a beekeeper reset about 20 years ago. Yep. Has been out of it for a while, but he just offered to come today and help out. So I said, what the heck, let's do it. So I'm up here in Ozark. Today, we're just gonna kind of go through these uh, hives up here, see what we got. We're for sure gonna treat for beetles and just kind of see what our situation is. I already know I've got some dead outs, just have not been way through these hives in two or three months, some of them down in the brood chamber. So I really don't know what I'm gonna find. Well, we've used this hive several times in the past this year for different examples, but my goal today is to go through all these hives out here. I do have some dead outs we're going to clean up. I really don't know what I'm going to find. I have a feeling this one's going to be really good. I know some of them probably won't be. So let's crack in here and see what we got. Do you use a lot of smoke? Quite a bit. Look at that. See a beetle right there. We do have some beetles, and one of my goals today is to treat for beetles. Kind of show you what, the way I do that. Last year it saved me the technique I'm gonna show you. So we'll use it again this year. Top box looks like it's mostly honey, which is okay on these double deeps. So we'll get them, you know, we'll have to feed them probably much, if any at all. That's good looking comb. Yeah, see right here. A little bit of brood. Yeah, we got some brood right here. We got some larva right here. We got a few eggs right over here. Probably can't see those on the camera, but some brood over here. I am seeing some beetles though, which means we got to get on it. This particular location is pretty uh, pretty prone to have issues with beetles because these hives are either in the shade or partial shade, pretty much all of them, a good portion of the day. Look at that honey. Beautiful. So, yeah. yep. Got pollen down here. The bees seem calm, seem pretty happy. I'm going to go in that bottom box. Probably don't even really have to. Looking down in there, I can see there are a lot of bees. Real careful putting that back in. Another thing that I see here is this uh, wax build up on the top. That's from the queen excluder. So I'm going to go ahead and scrape this off. So the lid can lay flatter. You can put that in the bucket. And save put it in the bucket and save it and try to render it down. I was telling Doug here earlier, I got a brand new solar wax melter I'm going to try out. I'm just on the continuous quest to figure out the best way to render wax. And uh, Ryan up at Hooterville Honey recommended he got one and said he likes it, so I think I'm going to try it too. Oop, and got me in the thumb. Put my thumb right on it, I guess. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and take this top box off and just look down. The next level down. I haven't been in this box in probably, shoot, it may have been three months since I've been in this box. Oh yeah, it's heavy. <laughs> probably 60 pounds or more. Whoop. Doug, I might have to get some gloves. Oh my gosh, it's heavy for sure. I just mainly want to see a frame or two of good solid brood down here. Now remember, the flow has slowed down. So these queens might be slowing down a little bit too kind of hope they are actually but she's not slowing down much there's a lot of eggs in there brood's a little spotty we'll hunting around the edges pollen around the edges but that's kind of what you'd expect a lot of people will tell you you need to go from the outside first and that's a better plan probably but as long as you're real careful, I haven't had a lot of issues rolling the queen, but uh, it is best to start at the outside. But I'm trying to kind of do quick hive inspections. Remember, we're not in flow. We can create a robbing situation for not careful too. Yeah, she's just filling this thing up, laying it up. So here's one of my little uh, tips for beetle control. You can order these. I think they cost, give or take, around $100 for 150 of these towels. They're Dixie Disposable Food Service Towels, H700. It's the same principle as using Swiffer sheets, but I've had great success. Last year, it saved a bunch of my hives. Basically, you take one of these sheets and rip it into about three or four sections. I usually like to go three sections. Just lay it across the top of the... You can do it between each box. Just lay it right there like that. All right, and then you take another one. You put it on top just like this. They're about the just about an inch on each end or an inch and a half longer than the box. 
So the beetles will walk across this, their legs will get caught in this. It doesn't tend to catch the bees too bad. It'll catch a few. Uh, one of my friends had a big concern about maybe what if it catches the queen? As far as I know, I haven't had that issue, but I guess it is a possibility. But if I can save this hive doing this, it works well. Another trick I use, I use these beetle blasters. There's a couple different, about two or three different th ways you can do it. And I'm just gonna put one in this top level because there's not a huge beetle issue in this hive, I don't think yet. So you're supposed to put oil in here. You fill it up about halfway full of vegetable oil or whatever type of mineral oil, whatever type of oil they provide. I've done that in the past. So my, the danger with that is if you spill on the bees, it'll kill the bees. And if you happen to spill on your queen, then you're in trouble. You can use diatomaceous earth. A lot of people do that. But what I do is not necessarily the most common method, but it's, it, it works really well. I use this Abion roach bait. I'm gonna explain why I use it first of all and how it's worked for me in the past. You just need like a drop or two on each side of this thing. Tap it down so the bees can't get to it. Gotta make sure the bees can't get to it. So it's in the bottom of the tray. So you can use Abion. I've heard of people using Combat, but the Abion tends to draw them in really well. And you just slip it down between the frames, just like you do, the trap's designed to do. And what will happen is if, if it becomes a beetle problem in here, this thing will fill all the way to the top with beetles just from those couple of drops of Abion. That's an attractive to the beetles. Yeah, they do like it. And it works well. Until it kills them, they like it. <laughs> So that's kind of what I do. That's my two treatments of choice for beetles. Before I discovered these towels, that's pretty much exclusively what I did. I know I've killed a, thousands and thousands of beetles using that that way. And it really, as long as it's down in the bottom of the trap, it doesn't harm your bees. The bees can't get to it. I've had people say you shouldn't do it, but you know, have never had a real issue with it at all, any problems. Well, Doug and I got going a couple days ago up in Ozark. The bees got rowdy. It started robbing. Ooh, one tried to get me on the neck there. We did find some dead outs, had to clean that up. It was a mess. Um, but overall, the bees look good. I knew about a lot of those dead outs already. I had noticed them when we were pulling honey and when I was getting set up to pull honey. Um, but today, part of our job is gonna be to get some of these nukes that have been here. The splits I made uh, months ago, moved out to some pallets. I really almost have too many bees here in my backyard. I like to have only, you know, maybe six, five or six hives back here. I think we got 10 or 11 now. These nukes are ready to go to the pallets. So that's what we're gonna start off with. And then we're gonna do some more hive inspections. If y'all like what you see, if you hit that like button down below, I would appreciate it. All right, one of the challenges when you're moving bees in a packed out hive like this is how to get them in the hive. One trick I learned years ago that works pretty well, it won't get every bee, but it'll get most of them, is to smoke them like this. Normally they'll start running back in there. Smoke them really good. See them running in? This nuke has done extremely well. I think I made this split back in March. And I may have even split it once since then. I'm not sure. Now people get worried about leaving bees behind, but with all these hives around here, the stragglers will find a home. And they'll be confused for a little while and then they'll probably be fine. So I'm still going. I'm gonna give them a couple of minutes, maybe smoke them one more time. I'm gonna put this rag in here just in the entrance. We're only going a little ways, maybe 10 minutes. So they'll be fine just to clog the entrance up for a little while. Now, if I was going longer, just of course I'd put a screen or something so they could get good ventilation. We got five nukes ready to go. And over here you'll see these bees are gonna collect. There's just nothing else I can do about it. Um, I guess I could technically move them at night, but this just doesn't work out for me. But I did spray some honey bee gone on here. And I think within a day or two, they'll all be over in those other hives there. Well, we got our first five out here at this new location. This is in Midland City, Alabama. So I'll leave them on these 
in these nukes until I decide to put them in bigger boxes. I don't know if that'll be today or not. Uh, probably not, I got a lot to do, but I got four pallets out here so far, which is enough for 16 hives. And I'm gonna bring some more out here from Ozark in the farm. So we'll leave them in nukes for now and put them in big boxes when it's time. Kind of excited about this new spot. It's pretty secluded, but there are cotton fields around here. So hopefully it'll work out good. We got them out here. We got 16 hives on four pallets. They seem to be settling in nicely. We brought them out here from my house, from Ozark and from the farm. And boy, look at these from the farm. Look how strong they look. They got a little nasty with me. Particularly that blue and white one right there, man. They've settled back in. I just didn't like being moved. So we got that done. Now let's see what else we can get done today. Uh, we're up at the farm. We're kind of in a race against time, I'm afraid. It looks like it's going to rain. I'm going to take you through this hive with me right here. And maybe one or two more, we'll see what we got. This is a double deep. Not a lot of bees on the front. I already see a couple of beetles in here. Lots of honey, man. This, this honey here was unbelievable. Let's just pull out a frame or two and see what we got. Don't see a lot of bees at all. Bees, but, well, we got a lot of brood though. Look at this, on this side anyway. Yeah, look at that. That's really nice. I see eggs, I see brood. I even see some drone brood down there. Yeah, not a lot going on there. Next frame over, I'll show you, it's pretty much honey. Gotta really work pretty quick with this rain rolling in. Yeah, a little brood right there. They're starting to really back off uh, with summer coming in with the flow mostly done they're going to start scaling back a lot i think i'm not sure i think this is probably a split i did early in the year and it just i think it did really well if i remember right so i put it in a 10 frame and a ended up being in a double deep here just gonna use my dixie towel technique on this one i don't see a lot of beetles but i did see a few this should take care of it hopefully let's put one across the top right there put the lid back on and move on with the cloud cloudy weather coming in i just really can't afford to take a lot of time in these hives today bees are starting to get a little feisty as well this is the next hive over is the wind is starting to pick up i heard a little thunder so we may not get through this one but this is another double deep this one looked like it had more bees on the front of it it does have more bees so oh my gosh it does have bees i heard them this was another split i think we did yeah they're starting to pop me I think I have to get my jacket on or just quit for now. Hmm. Let's just go ahead and see real quick. Maybe they won't get to me too bad. All right, we got honey, nectar. Let's see if there's any brood next frame over. If there's brood, we're just going to call it a day. There is. Let me show you this one real quick. And I think it's about to start dumping on us. I'm going to check one more frame. Treat for beetles. And they're getting after me. It's stung about four or five times already. Look at that. Beautiful. Nice frame of brood. Next frame over looks similar. Frames down below are similar too. And I've got to close this thing up. It is starting to rain. And they are not happy. All right, over and out. <laughs> I left my smoker out there. I've got to run get it. But I think that's it for today. It's supposed to rain, I think, the rest of the day pretty much. And I doubt if I'll be able to do anything else with the bees today. I'd hope to be in them all day. It's just afternoon. But between uh, what we did Saturday with Doug helping and then today, I got a lot done. Still have a lot to do. That's just how it goes sometimes. Got to get back to work tomorrow. And uh, we'll pick it up whenever I can. Y'all take care and be safe.